What's good, guys? Fancy Joe here bringing you my 2022 pre-NFL draft running back rankings. Going to be talking about these running backs in the 2022 class, ranking all of them, giving a little bit about them, you know, talking that. Before I hop into that, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You're going to stick around. Uh, make sure that you stick around for the channel. Going to be bringing you wide receivers soon as well. Post-draft rankings, that's the biggest thing. With all these running backs, you think you know uh, approximately their value, you can rank them pre-draft, but really what matters is your post-draft rankings and where you're going to take that. So if you're interested in Dynasty, Redraft, any of that stuff, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Let me know what you would change, all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's start off with my number six running back in this class, James Cook. James Cook, brother of Dalvin Cook, fantasy football star for the Minnesota Vikings. <clears throat> some reason, it's not wanting to cooperate and show me the stats right now. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Dalvin, or James, excuse me, was not a full-time back in his time at Georgia, but as you can see, we highlight this year, 6.4 yards of carry, 6.5 yards per carry for his career, and that was in the SEC. 6.4 yards of carry last year was fourth in the SEC altogether, and then you see that number over 10.5 yards per reception, 67 reception delays in college quite a bit for a running back in college so that bodes great for him going to the nfl he is smaller than his brother um 5 190 moving on to his combine his explosiveness stuff like that ran a 4 4 2 uh 33 inch vertical 124 inch broad jump solid numbers solid ex numbers explosiveness wise and really on the tape you can see the explosion he's elusive he can catch the ball i do see him being you know a pass catching running back something similar to that not in the same role that his brother is using in the NFL, and that's why he's number down number six. But I do think he's a weapon in the NFL that can instantly be brought in and succeed on third down, get a few carries a game, and be a difference maker, uh, be a guy who can make people miss, just not a bell cow necessarily. Uh, the rest of these guys on this list, I swing a little bit more for the fences. They're guys who I think have either a three-down skill set or a workhorse skill set, but James Cook uh, is our number six. Okay, so our number five running back for this class is Damian Pierce, running back from Florida. Really like the tape on Damian. Uh, is a big time back, as you can see, 5'11", 215 up there. He had wasn't used a ton. It was a part-time guy at Florida, but you can see the efficiency, 5.7 yards of carry, and he doesn't have a ton of carries on his body already to slow him down. I really like that, uh, projecting him to forward into the NFL game that's what i look for in a player i don't want somebody who's got you know already a thousand plus carries on their body not necessarily that it's the biggest cause for alarm it depends you know how much they're, really how high their utilization rate was things like that but i do like this he's 19 receptions 17 receptions a year before that for a big back like him it's surprising to see him catch the ball and as well as he does doesn't necessarily have the breakaway speed i think some people have comped him to kareem hunt i didn't see that in the film uh Kareem Hunt, I think, notably plays faster than his combine time. I think Damian Pierce plays around a 4-6, which is really right on the combine. I'd say that's really the only knock on him, in my eyes, is just he really is. I think he is a 4-6 player. That's not bad for a running back. That's pretty, you know, average. He's just not a 4-4 guy or who's going to blow people away. Um, but the 43-inch vertical and the 119-inch broad jump, that shows good explosiveness. That's what you need. That short area quickness, he has that. He can make people miss, and he's a load when he's running the ball. A violent ball carrier, ball of muscle. Um, really like watching his film and that's SEC, and that's why he's my number five running back. Our number four running back, Rashad White, running back from Arizona State. The thing I really most enjoyed most about Rashad White's film, he was honestly one of the later guys I looked at. Um, you know, just been hearing a lot of buzz about him lately in the draft community and all of that, so I wanted to check out his film and. Uh, was very pleasantly surprised when I did. Honestly, I had my top five list already to go, and then I watched Rashad White. I knew instantly he was better than some of the guys on this list, to be honest with you, so I had to get him on here. Um, yeah, I just love that 182 carries last year, five and a half car yards of carry, not insane in the Pac-12. I will say that's the hardest thing I think about evaluating running backs. You have to contextualize the conference that they play in, whether SEC, Pac-12, Big 12, Big 10. You know, all these running backs play in different conferences. The speed is very different in the Pac-12. The speed and size are very different in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 as compared to the SEC or the Big 10. So, um, but really liked that. I thought he was a good runner. 
has good size, um, and at 43 receptions this last year, over 10 and a half yards with carry. The year before that, he showed that explosiveness when he wasn't the guy nearly as much, when he wasn't the you know the running back there. But now that he was a starter this last season, really excelled in that role, and honestly just looked excellent on film. Had a ton of touchdowns, 16, 50 on the ground, which is a stat that you know tends to lead to success in the NFL, surprising as it may seem. But I just love that he has, you know, is a big back who has caught the ball out of the backfield already. All those things flowed really well for him. This is the thing I like as well. Not only is it big back six foot two fourteen, he ran a four four eight at thirty eight inch vertical and a hundred twenty five inch broad jump. These are all great explosive numbers. Numbers. I don't think uh, Rashad White. I think I think Rashad White will make it on a team and be very very um, have a good chance to compete if he's in a position where he can. I think you know draft capital. Like, like if Rashad White lands on a team. Uh, like the Buffalo Bills, you know, it's like I think he could be the starter there uh, very quickly. So keep an eye on Rashad White. We really like the tape on him. Moving on to our next player. Our number three running back, Isaiah Spiller out of Texas A&M. Really, another guy I just like the tape. I just don't think he has necessarily the explosiveness of some of these backs. That's something that needs to be said. That is the one area I'll say he's lacking in. But 6'1", 215, good size for him. And then he has the production profile from being a three-year start in the SEC, but he's not logged down with work. I like that he was, you know, basically a thousand-yard ball carrier on the ground each of these years. He has 74 receptions in college. That 7.9 number isn't great, to be honest with you, but you do have to contextualize that, that he's in the SEC. Um, and then when you look at 5.6 yards per carry in the SEC, I think that's a great number. You look at Damian Pierce, he's averaging 5.7, but on a smaller volume, he's been able to year over year, at that 5.5 number, which I think is really a solid uh, pace. But I do think, you know, the downside to him is I don't know if he's going to be one of those guys in the NFL that can – That I don't think he can be a part-time player and be super successful in the NFL, to be honest with you. I think he's a guy who's going to need more volume. I mean, he needs that starter role. So if he's not a third-round pick or higher, the road gets really dicey for him. Um, he's not a guy who can make your day on one play. He's not that explosive. Bringing us to his numbers, he didn't run the 40, 30-yard vertical, 30-inch vertical and 114-inch broad jump. Not great for a running back, to be honest with you. And he ran a 4.6 is what they said ahead of his uh, <clears throat> at his pro day. So, you know, a good player and uh, reason for optimism on Isaiah Spiller. And, I mean, he's my number three running back in the class. I do like him. The tape is good. He's a fluid – he's very fluid, very coordinated. I think that's what you uh, – is very clear to see when you watch his tape. Moving on to our number two player. My number two running back is none other than Kenneth Walker from Michigan State. Kenneth Walker was an absolute tank his last year at Michigan State. Really just took it to another level. Uh, he started off his career at Wake Forest and then transferred and became the guy at Michigan State and really took advantage of the job. Uh, but as you can see here, 6.2 yards for carry. And yeah, it's not the big... Uh, or no, it's not the SEC, but it's the Big Ten. I would say arguably, you know, the second best division or the second best division of college football in my eyes, the Big Ten. And he was able to succeed at a crazy level there. 18 rushing touchdowns as well. Did not catch the ball a bunch. That's the biggest red flag to Kenneth Walker. But when you watch him as a runner, um, he hits the ball. He hits the hole so hard and just goes. I mean, really talk about explosiveness. This kid has it. I think that's why you see that number up at 6.2. Um Honestly, too, he does look more fluid as a pass catcher than you think. That's why he was able to get to number two on my list. Normally, if you're just a runner, uh, I wouldn't have him ranked this high. But I do have some reason to believe he could potentially develop that part of his game, and especially on his landing spot. If he goes to a team that uh, will work on him a little bit in that aspect, I think he's a guy who a few years from now could be a 30-plus reception back uh, in the NFL. So I don't think it's something he can't do potentially like a Jordan Howard. I think he has the skill set to learn it one day. Um, but, yeah, necessarily year one, will he be down there on third down, running a ton of routes, uh, only if the team is desperate, I think, at this point. Okay, and then looking at his combine numbers, this is where it gets really impressive. So he's 5'9", 211. That's a great size for an NFL running back. 4'3", 40 is even better. This is what I'm talking about. He can take, he can make that one play his whole day if it has to be. I think he's a guy who's going to be drafted high enough probably a second-round pick that he will be a starter for a team and get tons of work. Um but, you know, we see a guy like Jonathan Taylor be able to break off a 70-yard run. I think he's a guy who can add that element to an NFL offense instantly. Look at that 34-inch vertical, 122-inch broad jump. Those are solid with the numbers, and those are numbers, too, that lend themselves to thinking that he is a very explosive player. And when you watch the tape, 
it's very easy to see how explosive he is running against good competition as well. Had five touchdowns against Michigan, single-handedly kept them, or won that game for them. They would have been out of that game if Ken Walker was not a Michigan State Spartan. Moving on to number one, Brees Hall is our number one running back from Iowa State. Brees Hall was an absolute production. Ah, I mean, the production chart is just off the charts, honestly, when you look at Brees, Hart, Brees Hall. excuse me. But looking even at his freshman year, 900 yards rushing, 9 touchdowns, 23 receptions. Those are good numbers, an 11-yard average. You love to see that from a running back. Um, 280 and 253. That is like the slight knock on him. You, you see some running backs that come out of college with 300-plus carries for 3-plus years. So the fact that he only has 2 years over 250, um, you know, it could be a lot worse in my eyes. But he does have a reception profile, 82 receptions, by far the most you know, the most production of any of these backs has 21 touchdowns his sophomore season and 20 the next year, um, 23 from scrimmage both of those years. That's a stat that, you know, lends itself to success in the NFL, has that nose to the end zone, as you say. Um, but he's a guy, you know, it is a little bit difficult to see his speed on display in the Big 12. I'm not saying he doesn't run outrun guys. He does that very frequently. But you're thinking how fast are these guys on the field? Um, which is why the NFL combine, I think, was so helpful to his case. Honestly, I think Ken Walker probably would have been my number one running back coming into it by looking at his tape. I think he is a good running back, obviously. He's my number one player. But if we look at this 40-yard dash number, 4.39, and he's 5'11", 217. That is a good number. Um, he's not a small guy. He can handle a three-down workload in the NFL, which I absolutely love. He did it in college as well. You've seen it. He's going to have to get better on third down. But a 40-inch vertical and 126-inch broad jump, these are excellent, excellent, excellent numbers for explosiveness and make you think that he will be able to take that leap to the next level and be continue to be a very, very productive player. And, you know, I he's probably the odds-on to be somebody, if anyone, one of these backs sneaks into the first round or back, early second-round pick, I think Brees Hall will be the first back selected. And depending on what team you go, he could be the number one pick in your dynasty drafts. If you guys have made it to this point in the video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button in the video. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll respond as always. If you want to stick around for my post draft rankings, my wide receiver rankings, all this good stuff. This has been Fancy Joe. Thank you guys for watching.